Hi, welcome to CMVG's preview of next week's Xbox reveal. Uh, I'm here with Jason Killingsworth, Features Editor on Edge, and Matthew Peller, Editor on Games Master. Uh, we're going to run through everything we think is going to happen next week and take a guess at our best guess. Not guess, actually, based on based on stuff we've Edu heard. Educated and, ed guesses. Yeah, educated yeah, guesses. Highly educated. So let's start, let's kick things off with the most important thing, I guess. What's it going to be called? Is it going to be called in Infinity? Is it going to be called Just Xbox? What's our, what's our take on it? I'm sticking with just Xbox. I, I don't know, um, but everything up until now has always pointed to just a simple Xbox title. I think it fits with where Microsoft want to be. I think having Infinity afterwards would complicate the console's name. They want Xbox to be the go-to entertainment system for everyone in everyone's living room. Just having it Xbox, which is the brand a lot of people are familiar with anyway, I think it's nice and simple. It's a pain for us because when we write about it, our readers are going to be saying, well, do they mean Xbox? Do they mean the first Xbox? But I think from a brand perspective, just sticking with Xbox is, is going to be the wisest choice. Well, I, I think the connector is instructive here because you had this, this sort of funny spelling of the, the K-I-N-E-C-T. Yeah. -E -E and, and to me, that was just, it was an SEO play. Um, you know, they want people, they don't want people to type in C-O-N-N-E-C-T and then get 200 billion search results in Google. You type in connect, you get, you get the connect. Um, so I think to have just Xbox as the title, uh, they're going to be aware of, of the SEO considerations and, and just Xbox is going to open the dam um, when, you, when you type it into Google and they're so going to want that specification to kind of... So do you think the whole strategy is based on... The Google search search results of the name. You mean Bing? <laughs> Bing, sorry, yeah, I mean Bing strategy, obviously. Yes. I, I think mean, it's an interesting idea, you know, I just wonder, I mean, because to me, like, the, what Matt says makes sense in, in, in that we know that uh, Microsoft want Xbox, the next Xbox, to be more of a sort of cross-media platform, don't they? So that sort of Xbox branding kind of makes sense, but it's interesting what you say. I never sort of thought of it from that point of view before. Yeah, I mean, you saw Apple kind of dealing with the same thing when they were working with the branding for, the, they called it the new iPad, mm. and, and the internet kind of blew up. <laughs> yeah. For the first time, the internet, internet got mad about something. Um, and and like, well, this is going to be confusing because you had the iPad 2, and they've had this very sequential numbering system with mm. the iPhones, and then to call it just the new iPad seemed like a, like a sequence break in a way. Yeah. It just became too general all of a sudden. You know, Grandma says, I want, you know, I want an iPad for Christmas, and it's like, you know, well, sort of which one do you want? There's yeah. an iPad 2, there's a new iPad. Um, so I think to have just Xbox, there's just the potential for confusion where they don't want there to be any confusion. Whatsoever. So your take would be that there's definitely something in this Xbox Infinity kind of rumor I, that's going on. I think so. I think the, the name Infinity, um, it, it, there's sort of a natural progression from 360, because the whole kind of idea with the 360 is that this is an entertainment yeah. kind of thing that's sort of surrounding you on all sides in a 360 degree angle and um, in Infinity it has that same kind of idea that well, there's this makes too much sense for me though for them to, <laughs> to go for it I mean <clears throat> from you know my personal point of view it'd be great to be called Infinity or something similar um, but then I wanted the Wii to be called the Revolution originally and in fact the Wii ended up being a brilliant name that everyone knew um, I don't know like the infinite possibilities uh, sort of marketing angle that they can play with it's great but then there are lots of infinities out there that I just I just yeah. worry there might be confusion like Disney Infinity it's like oh no, that's, a, that's a pain like for Disney certainly it's like is that tied to a console then in people's eyes yeah it's a car, I, I, it's I a car brand but then Durango you know they that, that's an SUV so maybe they're there's just a yeah. car okay. culture over at Microsoft. So I guess we can say we're fairly split on that uh, let's move things on and talk about the actual hardware itself now there have been tons and tons of rumours about how this machine's going to be spec'd up. Um, what's your take on it, Jason? How, where, where do you think Xbox uh, Infinity stroke Xbox nothing is, yeah. going to, uh, is going to sit in terms of, how is it going to compare to PS4? I guess people want to know. Slightly less favorably, I think. Right. Um, you're looking at a very comparable machine, but, but the specs won't be, won't be quite as um, Full, th full throttle as, as the PS4, and that, but that follows the trend that we've seen over the past few generations. Do you think that's to do with the fact that they're focusing a lot of their attention on this cross-media stuff? Do you think that's, that's compromised some of the specs? Because there has been talk about how they're having to save like three gig of, of RAM for you know, other stuff unrelated to get kind of gaming and that kind of right. thing. Right. 
Well, it's gonna it's gonna be a very powerful machine, and there's no there's no question about that. Um, saying it's a shade less powerful than the PS4 is still going to give you an yeah. extremely muscular piece of hardware. Um, I mean, just the fact that the memory is going to jump from 512 megabytes to you know eight, eight, gig. eight, eight gigs. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> that's even, a massive deal. <laughs> even if you're not sort of a you know a geeky sort of technical you know number cruncher, <clears throat> like you can understand. Yeah, and remember at the time, like when the Xbox 360 came out in 2005, like 512 was a big jump for them. Yeah, they were going to go with 256 massive. until like yeah. uh, Epic pointed out yeah. that no, we need more, and it was a billion dollar decision at the time. So. Yeah, I mean, it's still coping well with 5.12. Think about the games that we've had this year already, um, the likes of Bioshock Infinite, for instance, and what that can do on a machine as old as the Xbox 360. And now if you're talking about a machine with well, 16 times uh, the memory yeah. of, of that console, times two, you know, when you factor in the PlayStation 4, that also has you know, 16 times. I mean, we should point out that these aren't confirmed specs, but these are just, They're, there's been such a lot of talk about it being eight, 8 gig that it just seems unlikely that it won't be. Yeah, and there are so there are sources that are, are feeding some of this information to, to various outlets and and they've been they've been spot on on yeah. a number of predictions. So there is there's credibility to, to these claims. Yeah. What about what about the hard drive? I mean they're they're losing the sort of power PC architecture which probably is going to mean an end to backwards compatibility. I mean what's your take on that? Does backwards compatibility matter that much and if it does how are they going to kind of get around that um well there are a lot of games on this i mean this is the, the longest console gen i think in, in memory like we've been going seven years plus now so there are a lot of games in people's libraries that i think they'll be sad to to have to keep their xbox 360 plugged in next to this new console as well in order to play them at the same time i don't know backwards compatibility to me it's always been a, a big deal i've always wanted it in my consoles but if i look back how many times did i, did I use it in the ps3 I probably played about three PS2 games yeah. uh, on my PS3, yeah. so I think I think it's something. If there is no backwards compatibility, which I don't expect there to be, um, a lot of people will be upset by it. But in actual fact, if they're buying a new console, they're buying that new console for the new games, and they'll still have their old. Consoles. Yeah, and the, and, the, and the author Stephen Poole was was joking on Twitter uh, after the PS4 announcement that he it was really unfortunate that Sony was going to come to your house. And you know, obliterate your PS3 with a hammer, you know, so that mm. you could never play those old games ever again. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're still, go you know, people are going to, they're not going to toss the, the 360 in the bin. Like, it's, that's, it's, it's still a nice piece of hardware. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's got some, it's got some life in it. You know, maybe it's not sitting in the entertainment center, but it's, it's in the closet, and you can pull it out if you're feeling nostalgic. So, do you think they'll get around it in a similar way uh, that PlayStation has in, in using sort of cloud? Like gaming to kind of allow you to access older games. I mean, what does it? Even, I mean, you know, you said backwards compatibility doesn't even, doesn't really matter that much. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think there's some people yelling at their computers yeah. screens <laughs> when, when you said that. Well, no, I, I just think I, it's I mean, not that it doesn't for me, matter. It's just no, no, no. But I think it's it's less important than people make out. Like you say, you, you're always going to have your old consoles. Now, I think the cloud situation is an interesting one because it wasn't just so Sony who were looking at. It cloud solutions years ago. You know, Microsoft were yeah. buying up a lot of people invested in, in, in the industry. And I think Absolute is going to be a core part of, of next-gen machines, like both of them. I say both of them because I don't consider Wii U to be in, in the pile, of course not. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think you're going to see a lot of cloud-based solutions for the next Xbox. So, I mean, they've been toying with it any, anyway. They were the first console to sort of play with the cloud systems in terms of shared saves. Yeah. Um, you know, Sony were quite late to the party actually uh, on that front, um, yeah. and I think that was sort of Microsoft just dipping their toe in the water, seeing what they could do. Sony have been really bold in coming out saying we're going to do all this stuff. In fact, they've been quite premature because a lot of the stuff that they showed at the reveal event is not going to be available at the PS4's launch. Yeah. It's going to be rolled out over time, months and months, perhaps years after the console's launched. Um, Xbox, I don't know, I expect Microsoft to have more maybe up front. They've yeah. been very quiet up until now on that front, and that's because they've been working away at it, working, working. Microsoft have the, the brilliant ability to just chuck money at a problem until it's fixed. Yeah. And they've been chucking money at this problem for a few years. Yeah, yeah. And I expect them to come out with a fix next week. Yeah, I mean, think about the, gross, uh, the growth of Xbox Live. I mean, think about the blades on, you know, on, yeah. on the original sort of, you know, Xbox 360 kind of display like it feels there's like an huge... older gen now when you compare okay the Metro dashboard's got a ton of problems but the old dashboard 
compared to the new one. Like it's hard to believe that they're yeah. the same system. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. And and we're going to be seeing the next, you know, the same thing with the next generation. Those consoles, which were tied nicely with the Infinity, will be evolving yeah. constantly, month after month. Um, yeah, I mean, you, we call them platforms for a reason. It's a platform that you build on. Yeah. And so you can't, like, they're not they're not showing you sort of the f the finished uh, you know the finished skyscraper. Like they're showing you the foundation and how sturdy that is. And then and then developers come in and and Microsoft continues to work to to build that that really amazing structure upon that base. Okay. So what about disks? I mean. Uh Will it have a disk drive? Lots of people, lots of developers saying, get rid of disks, it costs us a million pounds just to put 100,000 disks into to two territories. But the gamer out there, and I'm, I sort of include myself a, a, among this, you know, they, they sort of were so attached to disk drives and also there is here where the, the internet connectivity is not as good as it is in some parts of the world. It, it might affect, you know, it might affect your enjoyment. What, what's, your, what's your take on that? Do you think, I think I'll have a disk drive. It will, absolutely, will. yeah, I, absolutely. I, I'd be shocked if it didn't. I mean, it will be a Blu-ray drive, so yeah. it'll be a different kind of drive for for the Xbox. But I mean, you look at the Apple line of, of laptops, and the micro, uh, the the MacBook Air exists, and and it's great, and it's portable, and it doesn't have an optical drive. But they didn't wipe out the optical drive in all of their laptops, mm. and and that's you know, it's a telling detail. There's still a demand, yeah. for, especially on more powerful mm. pieces of hardware. The world isn't ready for digital-only devices. Certainly not home consoles, where you're talking about games. I mean, next gen is a lot more powerful than current gen, so the game size is going to be massive. spiral. Yeah, like you're going to be in a situation like the Wii U is at the moment, where if you want to download one game, if you want to download Lego City Undercover for the Wii U, you, you need to get an external hard drive? Yeah. I mean, that's nuts. Didn't really that, factor that one in, did they? I mean, it is crazy. Can you imagine a situation when they're putting out a console where people are creating these games 50 gig plus, perhaps, for this console, and you've got um, a hard drive that can you know, get 10 tops. And this is a console that Microsoft also want you to have all your video device, uh, videos on. They want you to have all your music on. All of your entertainment is supposed to be working out of this, you know, one machine essentially. You cannot have that machine have no disk drive because you'll be able to buy five games and that'd be it. And then you have to delete yeah. games to get. No, they have to stick with disks. And that's not even taken into account. Like most people don't have internet connections okay. that are, you know, able to cope with it. Um, I mean, this is where some of the cloud-based solutions will come into play. You you will see more over time um, that you, I don't know, maybe next Xbox you will be able to stream the new FIFA, um, you know, play it via the cloud. Um, as well as buy it on disc. I don't know. I expect that to be something they're looking at for, for maybe not this year. But it, it's future. it's worth mentioning also that the 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 current rumor is that there's going to be a 500 gigabyte hard drive yeah. installed on every Xbox. They split the market with um, the 360, and they had a line of Xboxes that didn't have a hard drive, um, and then others that did, and and that was a problem for developers. Yeah. Uh, they didn't know whether they could you know ask and expect. Players to be able to install the games, um, and there were games so. that didn't work on that machine. Like I remember when, mm. which was which Halo was it that came out, and if you had the arcade edition, it wouldn't actually work. Was it Reach or was it? Yeah, was it, four, it was one of the it was Reach, three I think it was, yeah. And like people and couldn't reached. play it, and I think they were selling like there were bundles that you could buy at the shops where you had an arcade. Yeah. The Xbox and you could buy Reach with it or whichever Halo it was, I forget now. Yeah. And people were taking it home and realizing they can't play this game. It was it was this ridiculous, laughable situation, but they can't afford to make the same mistake yeah. again. Okay, so in, in the hardware uh, s section of this show, one thing, the big elephant in the room is Connect, Connect 2.0. I mean, what's our take on that? Jason, you, 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 you look like a man who, who enjoys <laughs> Connect during his time. I do. I just I just got done with sort of a, a rousing round of Connect adventures rafting yeah. down the river. Um, yeah, I mean it's Connect. There, people have it's it's a polarizing thing. I mean, it's it expands the market for Microsoft hugely, and it, and it was hugely popular as well. I mean, this is this is a device that sold millions and millions and millions mm -hmm. of of units. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be uh, integrated even more closely. I mean, they're they're doubling down on Connect. Um, Connect 2.0. Uh, yeah. So do you think yeah, it'll be yeah. built into the machine, or do you think it'll be another thing that sits next I to I can't your... imagine how it would ever be built into the machine, because then the, 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 yeah. the bulky Xbox, I guess, presumably, and the Connect would have yeah. to be sat somewhere in your living room where it's like it can see you and you can see it. So I, I'm sure it's going to be a, a different device that is plugged into the Xbox. This time around, Connect is there from day one. So the problem with Connect on the Xbox 360 was 
go back to 2005, yeah, I'm sure they were, they were working on it, they were thinking about it, but it was sort of an afterthought in terms of tech, how it worked with the 360. There was a big problem with the actual connection with the 360, it wasn't powerful enough, there wasn't enough memory set aside for it to talk to Connect and vice versa. Yeah. And obviously the specs of Connect went down over time, it was going to be this all singing, all dancing machine that could do everything and then they stripped out processors and whatnot from Connect and it became a lot less powerful than people were expecting. And part of that was just the 360 wasn't designed from day one to work with Connect. Mm. Connect is absolutely central to what the next Xbox is going to be yeah. um, and the Xbox itself has been built around Connect, not so that they're melded together but simply that the, the ports are right for Connect and you're going to see a, it work a lot better than, than Connect has. There is a, there is a rumour that uh, that's concerning to me that Connect will have to be plugged in for and, and functional for it to even work. I was going to ask you about that, yeah, do you think there's much, much truth in that or? I can believe it. I mean, I can see it in, the situation with Connect is at the moment, I'll be watching something, I'll be streaming something on Love Film, or I'll be watching a DVD, and my Connect's plugged in, and then like someone or Brian Cranston will say something breaking bad, and Connect will say, oh, rewind? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 so I have to grab the pad. Yeah, yeah. My wireless pad's turned off, so I have to wait till it's, you know, turn it back on, stop, play again, and then it'll get to that point, and Cranston will say the same thing, and it's like, oh, rewind. So I have to go and I have to unplug Connect so I can watch some shows, and it's a nightmare. And it wasn't supposed to do that, and it shouldn't do that. Connect 2.0 cannot do that. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, again, I go back to the point, they're chucking money at this problem. They will make it go away. And with the new Xbox designed around Connect functionality, absolutely, well, I hope you won't be getting those sorts of issues. And in theory, it shouldn't be a problem working with Connect. Yeah, and, and the time. big rate, the, this sort of tug of war with, with, with Sony and the PS4, that they have to find a differentiator and they have to, to really seize that and, and, and make it a, a key marketing point for the console. Mm -hmm. And, and Sony's, Sony's share button, I mean, that's a very small button on the controller, but that was a huge differentiator yeah. for the PS4 and, and just opened up, you know, everybody watching the show just thought, oh man, I could, I could do this and I could throw this at YouTube and pull yeah. my friends in to watch this game. And I think the interesting thing, sorry to jump in there, is that Sony have their own connect on the PS4, but they're just not talking about it. Like we saw at the reveal, you know, they've got their cameras set up as well. Um, you're going to be able to do very similar things on the PS4, but the difference is for Microsoft Connect, they see that as a big selling point. Whereas I think Sony, they're happy for it to be there for now, but they don't want it to be front and centre. Sort of well, it's, it's not even really branded. It's the PlayStation camera, or something, yeah. you know, something. It might as well be like a, a Nikon point and shoot or something. Like it doesn't. But have you're going to have very similar, you know, functionality for for a lot, you know, a lot of the time. But for Microsoft, they, you know, Connect was very popular. It sold millions, like you said. They want to sell on the back of the Kinect branding. So uh, one rumour is about Kinect having to be on all the time, another rumour is that the your Xbox has to be always online. Uh, it's sort of a, a rumour that's dogged uh, Xbox and Microsoft for a while. Um, at no point have they really come out and denied it, which is only kind of you know, added to the, the speculation. I mean, Matt, what's your, what's your take on that? Uh, I would be surprised if... if the new Xbox would not work if you weren't online. I, I'd be shocked if that were the case. Now, I, I wouldn't be surprised so much if there was some sort of online validation for certain points, certain titles perhaps. Um, but the idea that if your internet goes down, your Xbox is going to shut down essentially, or the game's going to kick you out, that just seems nuts to me. And I so many people would be put off by yeah. it. Um, I know that you know Xbox Live is a huge thing, they want to get people playing online, but they must have figures about the, the amount of people who are playing offline still. And I don't think a console that forces you to play online will convince those people who are currently playing offline, yes, I must get online and I must play over the internet because I want this new console. They're just going to say, no, I won't bother, I'll go with Sony. Yeah, I mean, Sony, they put their, their cards on the table first, and so they're... Microsoft has had three months to study yeah. the whole playbook, um, at least the revealed playbook for the PS4. And, and they know that when they reveal the next Xbox that the first article that hits sort of every gaming website is going to be uh, you know, two columns. Here's what's, what yeah. the PS4 is doing on, in each one of these bullets. Here's what the next Xbox is doing. And if, if there's an always on connection, an always on call or row and yeah. it says, Yes, for Xbox, across. and no, for, for because Yoshida's uh, Shuhi Yoshida's already come out and said that there will not be always online. Uh, 
DRM for uh, PS4, then that that's just going to be an absolute wart on the on the tip of the new Xbox's nose. And I, so I guess it's obviously taught though that um, Microsoft's letting publishers make their own decisions. So a game such as Destiny, we already know that Destiny has to be online for you to play. You cannot play Destiny offline. And so it doesn't surprise me the idea that they'll be saying to publishers, if you want to implement this on your own titles, you can do, but it's optional. So there will be some games that you have to be online. There will be some games that you don't have to be online. Now, yesterday, we found out that EA are dropping online passes. So that's I'm interesting. So yeah. I'm wondering, th that to me sounds like, aha, so that sounds like that might well happen. And on EA's point of view, the next FIFA, maybe, maybe you do have to be, but again, that's a huge part of the market that they'll be cutting themselves but off But it's, it's interesting that EA and Microsoft reportedly have got such a very very close relationship yeah. and in fact you know the rumor is that EA are going to be at this Xbox reveal in a in a big way I, I and then it's interesting you know, that they drop the online passes yeah. I, I, I mean it's just is it tied in I mean uh, it's got to be I mean I remember watching the, the PS4 review I was tweeting saying oh it's interesting who isn't on stage right now like EA were a big absence yeah. from that show I thought yeah. nailed on for the next Xbox now whether it's going to be Battlefield I thought Battlefield at the time but we've seen Battlefield so maybe not maybe we're going to see some other titles talks of course Titan mm. um you know the respawn game from the guys who made, uh, yeah. who created Infinity Ward, who made Call of Duty. Um, okay, there's one of them left now, but still, respawn's a big deal. And there's talks that that might be an Xbox exclusive um, game. We'll see. Hopefully, we'll see uh, on Tuesday. Um, I think it was a big coup for Sony to get Destiny on their side to get the Bungie guys doing exclusive yeah. content for PS3 and PS4. Now, Destiny will still be on Xbox and next Xbox I. I'm guessing, I'm, I think that's nailed yeah. on. Um, but they need something to sort of battle on the, on the other side. Okay, look, I was gonna leave this to the end, but seeing we got into games, let's talk about mm. games. Yeah. I mean, do we, do we, what do we think they'll talk about, if, if anything, next week, Jason? I mean, they'll, they'll presumably reveal some games. Do we think they'll go full on, bam, 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 or do you think we'll sh they'll show like three or four titles and then say the rest are E3? Yeah, I mean, they have to, I mean, this is, this is a point where people say, it's really nice that you have a, a powerful console, thanks for showing us those pie charts. <laughs> but like, what the hell does that mean? Like, yeah. you know, sort of, what does it mean for the, the size and fidelity of the explosions that I'm going to see on your console? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, they have to come out with, with a flurry of punches. Like, I always imagine the, you know, the sort of NES Mike Tyson's punch out where like Tyson had that thing where he would do like this series of like, <laughs> yeah. And like when they do that game montage, that's kind of what I imagine that game montage should be. And they have to come out with just that flurry of uppercuts. So like. names. But yeah, I mean, I mean, we know Call of Duty is there. We Call, know Call, Call, of Call of Duty, definitely. I mean, first party stuff. Forza, Forza Five. I think that's, I think that's safe. Nailed on. But, uh, but I, I'm going to disagree that I don't think we'll see too many games. I think right. we'll see three or four. But I think they want to focus on the hardware for next week. And I expect like, the E3 conference or, or something to be where they come out with lots of exclusives. Well, that's the showcase, isn't it? I mean, the games are the showcase. Like the, so to talk, about the, to talk about the hardware, and like, you have to sort of show the hardware, and, and like, that's the hardware in action is, is going to be the games. So yeah. I, I just think it's, the, the advantage Sony have had is that they went so early that they've, they've got lots of extra stuff now ready for E3. Like people are, yeah. people are waiting to yeah. see yeah. what it's going to be. For Microsoft, it's what, a two week gap? Yeah. So it I, is virtually E3. Yeah, so, that, yeah. so they can't go with everything next week. They simply can't. They can't go with all the games and talk about the hardware and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the software, they're just going to forget about next week. Focus on the console because, I mean, some of the rumours about what the console may or may not be, whether this Stingray project, this second set-top box exists. Yeah. Potentially, it's a very confusing proposition. And so what I think next week, the job that Microsoft has to do is A, reveal the console, and B, make sure everyone understands that console, gets their head wrapped around the console, so that when E3 comes, and we see the games that the console is capable of doing, we see everything else it can do, we already know, we're not, we're not still trying to work out what is this machine, what can it do, what yeah. can't it do. I guess next week can also be a bit of a, okay, it's not a litmus test because it's a big deal for Microsoft, but at least they, they, can get feedback from that event and know going into E3 what they sort of need to clear up, what they need to correct maybe. So I, I, I think they're going to hold back on a lot of games okay. and just wait. Let's give people names there, Matt. Forza. Yeah. Call of Duty. Jason, you feel free to jump in here. Forza, Call of Duty. Do we think they might tease another Halo? I mean, it is, that is Xbox, isn't it, Halo? 
Yeah, I mean, did they have that team at 343 sequestered, sort of working on, on that title? I mean, it seems like Halo 4 would have sort of absorbed that, that whole sort of workforce. But, mm. but yeah, I mean, they, they could have had, you know, Microsoft has sort of secret vaults underneath the ground at their campus. They could, um, I, could, I could see a Halo, a Halo spot. One of the confusing so, things is that... Not a sequential Halo, yeah, but, but like a, a Halo, yeah, like yeah, an offshoot kind of Halo. Like an Assassin's Creed Brotherhood yeah. Halo. One of the confusing things, I guess, uh, we talked about Forza just now, is that we also know that there's probably the return of Project Gotham as well um, from uh, Lucid Games, which is basically a lot of people from Bazaar. Um, I mean, I wonder how they'll balance those off. They, they surely won't show both at the show. You can't go out with two driving no, games. No, so... That, that would seem a bit silly. So I think they'll have to pick and choose carefully if they are just going to go with a few. Some Rise, there's that Crytek game, Rise, yeah. which was a bit supposed to be a big deal on you know Connect. Yeah, and then I remember seeing that at E3 a couple of years ago at the conference and just yeah not being that excited. Yeah. I don't know, may, maybe things have changed and, and it, is a, it is a good choice to go out big because Connect will be a part of, of next week and so I think they need to back it out with something Connect focused. Yeah. That would make sense. I mean, Rise is a perfect fit because it's something that's been worked on for four years now. Yeah, it's been, Must a, be. well, it's been a long time. Yeah. We thought it was all cancelled. Yeah. And then he came out you know, a year ago or so ago and said it was, it was back on. I mean, then there's, then there's EA stuff, you know, FIFA, we talked about Battlefield. Could be, you know, FIFA could be connect enabled in some way this yeah, time. Well, it, right? was, it well, was connect enabled. Well, it was, yeah, like in, a, in a bigger so, way, you know. Yeah, yeah. more so. so. Yeah, that exclusivity thing with the EA that was rumoured, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. The online pass definitely suggests there'll be something along those those lines. And yeah, Titan. I don't know. I I could be wrong, mm. but I, I think there's something there. We know already that we're going to see the new respawn game this year at E3. So why not just tease it even two weeks yeah. early? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be smart. Okay, let's talk price. Uh, what, where do you think it's going to sort of land in terms of? Do you think that? Well, first of all, do you think they'll announce a price, Jason? No, no. I think they'll, they'll save that detail because it can be a really a distracting point. You know, they they don't want people to be crunching numbers. They want people to just think, "I want that," and then and let them start to really want it <laughs> yeah. before they say, okay, well, here's what you have to... Get used to the bombshell of how yeah. much it's going to cost yeah, later on down the line. Exactly. Like, they need to hook people. Anything that could potentially dissuade somebody from, from fully kind of committing emotionally to this device, they need, they need to set it to the side for now. Especially. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the first date. You know, they, they don't want to, uh, you know, talk about flower arrangements. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, they want to just kind of let that connection okay. kind of form and then and the price will come uh, potentially be three. What, what do you expect later. it to land at well, there's, in there's terms there's of price? There's a talk of like two different models, one being the kind of standard traditional, you pay X amount, you get the box, you take it yeah. home. Uh, the other one being you pay a smaller amount, but then you have the monthly subscription, subscription for yeah. two years perhaps. I think yeah. I think 10 or $15 per month has been, has been suggested. And then either, was it, um, Three hundred dollars for that, and five hundred dollars for just on its own. I think they were the it's early two hundred and fifty or something as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, analysts have been guessing three hundred and fifty, yeah. four hundred mm. price range. It's an, ex it, it's an expensive machine. Like if you look at, okay, it connects not as power uh, as expensive maybe to make as the Wii U gamepad necessarily. Mm. But if you think you're going to be getting Connect 2.0 in every box, you're going to be getting this powerful, powerful machine in every box. I don't think we're going to see another three hundred pound console. I think you're going to be paying more. I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. it's four hundred. I mean, there's a new there's a new controller, and yeah. like <laughs> sort of, they're, they're saying just because of the the new sort of wireless sort of interface that the old controllers aren't going. Aren't okay, going let's to talk controllers, Jason. So. You, 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 that's a beautiful segue because I was going to get on the controllers next. Kick it off. Yeah, I mean, the controller wasn't the controller the poster child of the PS4. I mean, it's, it's no surprise that the controller was the thing that was featured on, on every single magazine cover about the PS4, Edge included. Um, mm. That's and, probably because we did have a box to put on the cover, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, was, I could have seen Yoshida just giving a, a thumbs up, <laughs> like, you're going to like this. Um, yeah, I mean, the controller, it, it's going to be key. And it, and it shows that this is a generational jump, I think, and that was one of the big things with the PS4. It was like, this is such a new console. This is such an updated console. The old controller doesn't even work with it. It seems like a philosophical kind of assertion that um, this is so new that you, you won't even be able to use that old controller. That's, that's too sort of last season. Uh, so I think that, that will, it'll be a big um, selling point for the, for the new Xbox. Um, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a different console. It'll keep the same form factor. 
I mean, personally, the, the Xbox 360 controller is the most beautifully yeah. sculpted yeah. Uh, gamepad yeah. I've ever I mean, they're, not gonna, they're, they're surely not going to drift too far away from that fundamental design, which is so perfect that, that you know, no, I, like I, I even Nintendo are trying to copy it. I can't imagine yeah. they would. I mean... No, even even the logo we've seen the logo being used for the email invites for, for this new event. So even, uh, even that I, th I think is is key to keep. Um, you know the offset thumbsticks again. I, I don't think they'll be going anywhere. I think everyone is in agreement, or most people are in agreement, that the 360 pad is is the best pad yeah. that there has been, or one of the yeah. best pads. They know it. They, they know it, and they're they're not going to you know they're not going to try to no. do anything that could potentially mess. There is mess talk up their of. Risk. Touchpad being added similar to the PS4. Um, the PS4 share button, I don't know, that's such a great innovation that I, I hope there's something similar on the 360. There's talk about a lot of video outs on the 360 as well. There'll be an HDMI in, sorry, I'm, I'm talking current gen, on the next Xbox, yeah. I should say. Um, there's uh, rumoured to be HDMI in on the next Xbox because it's so important that you can record things to your, to your Xbox, that you can share things on your Xbox. It would surprise me if they didn't cover that off on the controller, that you'd have to go through menus for to activate those sorts of, of systems. Um, how they do it, whether it's part of this rumoured touchpad, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, if I, had, if I had to guess, I would say there, there will be a touchpad on, on the new controller. Right, okay. I, I think the, the smartphone uh, revolution has just been, that tidal wave has just been too absolute and it, it's uh, it's, ju it's just washed over everything and, and I, I think it's completely changed it's completely altered the landscape but what we shouldn't forget about the controller is that in Microsoft's eyes connect is half of the yeah. control system yeah, that's a so good that point. you've already got connect so voice controls are going to be more important than ever it may be that motions are like a replacement for navigating menus or I don't know we'll, we'll have to see next and week. sources but, but have said that the new that the connect 2.0 it will It'll know what your thumbs are yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, or track fingers. So yeah. Okay, so last question, the big one. <laughs> When's it going to be out, Jason? Uh, November. I, I think they just they want to give Christmas shoppers as much time as possible to to elbow each other in the face to yeah. to try to get this thing off the shelf and, and into their shopping cart. Uh, it's a good yeah. shout. I mean, maybe even a month earlier. And the thing about Microsoft is that. They haven't had any good games this year. Okay, there was Gears of War Judgment. Maybe you can argue that that's mm. one. But while Sony have had exclusives and continue to have exclusives, they've got Gran Turismo 6 on the way, they've got The Last of Us on the way, they've got Beyond on the yeah. way. Like, as early as last year, we were all sitting back thinking, what the hell have Microsoft got? Yeah. They've got nothing. No. They had Gears that wasn't a proper Gears, yeah. but they've got nothing. They need some games, and they're relying on third-party game, uh, third games at the moment to keep the 360 fresh in people's minds. But they might have to jump slightly earlier than November just to get something on the board before Christmas because yeah. there, there have been no games. Do you, I mean, but do you think they really care about that? I mean, I mean, I'm sure they care about making money, but I mean, do you really think that they care about the fact that they? Because if you look at the two formats, yeah, they, Sony've got Last of Us, GT6, and Beyond, which are three biggies, you know. But if you look at Xbox, it's got it's got like you say enough third parties to kind of fudge the the outlook a little bit so you think actually you know what the Xbox has got quite a lot of games coming out here so I just wonder whether they even care about that I wonder whether the reason they've pulled that there, there, there hasn't been any games you know first party games on Xbox is because they're all like trying to nail next next Xbox development do you yeah, know I, mean, I, I fully believe that that's why there haven't been any 360 but I don't know if they want to sort of get in early early doors be the first out for next gen again I'm not counting Wii U in this generation be the first out the door again just to cover off any potential November Sony launch we don't know when you know the PlayStation 4 is going to well, we don't even know if the PS4 is going to make it pre-Christmas here no. do we so yeah yeah exactly um yeah, the thing I'm most curious about is what has, how has Microsoft sculpted their message over the past three months? I mean, they're in the enviable position of sort of being able to dissect that game tape yeah. from from that reveal and and to mold every point to be the hopefully for the perfect rebuttal to each to each point that that Sony made. Uh, and so I think it'll be really interesting to see how this event feels. Um, in terms of conversation with with Sony's event and, and debate, because it really will be like, here's our you know, 
here's our vision for the next generation. Yeah. You know, this is why you know what you're doing in this area is insufficient, or you know, here's why we're going to do this better. Yeah. So I think it's going to be interesting as sort of. Uh, this kind of asynchronous debate. And you know, I, I, think, I think they needed Sony to go first with the reveal just because in recent years I think Microsoft have forgotten how to talk to gamers. They've been so focused on being the living room entertainment system, of being the device that everyone needs for their living room. They sort of glossed over the fact that they don't actually understand what most people's living rooms are like. If you look at Connect, if you look at how yeah. tough it is to like make Connect work, if you like in my house I don't live in like a tent or anything out in the park. Got a decent house, but I still have to rearrange my living. You live room. in this boardroom, so actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I said we were in that corner. As you, uh, as you, this sofa over there. Yeah, yeah. I have to rearrange my living room, completely rearrange it to make Connect work. Yeah. They, they think they know what everyone's living rooms like. They think well, they're, they're going to be the the central system of that living room. But up until now, the the problem with, that a lot of gamers have had with with the 360 in recent years is that they don't believe Microsoft know what they want. Mm. So it's important that Sony went first, just because they could sit back, they could take notes, they could learn, you know, what worked, what didn't, what are people responding to, what's a lot of the coverage that's, you know, spun out of that event. How can we do better than that? Because they've got a job to do to, to convince everyone that the next Xbox is going to be the right machine for them. And also, yeah. so, I mean, Sony's conference was so much about the gamer, wasn't it? It was like, every, yeah. you know, it was yeah. like it was speaking to the hardcore in, in every way possible, really. So. You know, you're, you're absolutely right. You know? I mean, they, they are starting to court the gamer again. They're talking about other studios they've got working on things. Back um, before I was in GM, you know, we worked on Xbox mm. World, and one of the final uh, columns that I wrote for Xbox World was how Microsoft have let everybody down because yeah. they've got no first-party properties outside Halo and Gears and Fable. Mm. Alan Wake, well, I don't know, maybe we've got another Alan Wake coming. I'm crossing fingers because I, I love that brand. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're already making noises. You've got Black Tusk and a few others yeah. who, are, who are working on you know, first party exclusives. Maybe they have paired with EA for Titan or whatever it might be exclusive on Xbox. It's important that they do something because at the moment the situation is Sony has you know, this exclusive, that exclusive, that exclusive, that exclusive, that exclusive, and Microsoft have two or three at best. You're going to see an indie developer on stage at, at this event. I mean, it's, I would be, I'd be shocked if there wasn't some high profile um, indie that sort of everybody loves that feels like the indie dev next door. Well, it won't be Jonathan Blow. We know it, that it, won't, it won't be Jonathan Blow. Um, it's interesting though that quite a few indies have been quite outspoken against. Microsoft absolutely, this absolutely. Point. they need to reverse that as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a this is a point actually worth camping out on for a second, um, because Sony, one of the big sort of messages that that's come out of you know, the the PS4 reveal and also the the game developers conference presentation where they talked about how they were stripping away a lot of the red tape, um, and then you've got the content strategists who are going around and wooing indie developers and getting them on the Vita and 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 PS3 platforms. I've uh, seen so like Nick Sutner on uh, on Twitter just you know the the American indie kind of evangelist for for Sony just tweeting indie developers all the time saying come talk to us talk to us about PS4 yeah. you want to do stuff Sh yeah Shahid Ahmad who's who's also been sort of instrumental in, in getting Thomas was alone on to and Sony looks like they look like the good guys right now and I think that um, you know Microsoft has has a job to do in that area they need to say you know. There was a lot of talk when Fez was was patching and had some issues, some bugs that they were trying to work out, and that there were these massive sort of price tags on patches that yeah. that you know Phil Fish couldn't could, you know couldn't or anybody would be able to was afford. It ten thousand or hundred thousand? I I, 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 can't I, think, remember I think it was I think it was ten grand. But yeah, it was it was something that like, no no indie de developers' pockets are that deep. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's our take. Uh, looking at what's going to happen next week, we'll be back. Uh, Matt, I think you're actually having a look at the the console in in action next week. So, but Jason and I will be back next week along with a special guest star to uh, do our reaction to what happens at the show. Uh, in the meantime, please put your comments below. Let us know what you think is going to happen next week, and we'll see you next week.